our story begins with this fan belt and I will get back to it but this is why I made this video first thing you have to remember is that these things are very old and they're also a Volkswagen the newest vanning you can buy is about six, 26 years old this one here is 34 years old it is an 83 so you can drive these as far as you want but they need to be well maintained and you have to constantly keep an eye on them. They are not a Honda. They will turn you into a mechanic after so many years. I've been driving this one for 21 years and I have never had a tow truck on any one of my vacations. So every single vacation I've taken, I've gone out and come back in this exact same van. And one of those reasons is a lot of things I carry on board to make sure that I don't break down, or if I do, I get back on the road quickly. So I made this video for a list of things you should probably carry in your van. Well, these are a list of things I carry in my van. I'm not telling you what you should carry, but let's see what I got. We're back to this fan belt. So on one of the vanigan lists on Facebook this year, somebody was up on a tow truck because their fan belt broke. I can assure you, this would be one of the first things you should be carrying in your van. Anything you're carrying in your van should be this fan belt. Number two, you should have this extreme tape or any of the kind of um, silicone rescue tape. You should carry this in every one of your cars, actually. This is used for fixing radiator hoses, and trust me, it works. So if you get a little hose that breaks, um, you just can seal that up. You can drive for quite a while on that. Now, I personally carry almost an exact duplicate of every hose for this 83 and a half. You don't have to do that. Usually the hose that breaks is the tiny little ones like that are buried deep inside behind the water pump or something like that. It's never the big ones where you can get that easy. So carrying all these extra hoses, which I do, is kind of overkill. But I would definitely get the tape. Here's another one that leaves people stranded all the time. Fuel pump. Carry an extra one of those. What I usually do, here well, I do all the work on my engine. So nobody's touched my engine for about eight or nine years now. So everything I take off the engine and replace, if it's still working to a point, I stick it back in the bus and carry it with me. It's always a good idea. So um, I carry a fuel pump, and that's a fuel filter. That's a fuel filter. It's like a used one, but it'll be good enough if my own clogs or something like that to get me home. I have a long piece of uh, fuel hose. Make sure it's the type for high pressure. And then I also carry the last ignition parts I took off, including all spark plugs and the last distributor cap and rotor. And then I have uh, spark plug wires. One is uh, from the distributor to the coil, and the other one is the longest plug for a spark plug. So that's enough to carry. I don't have to carry all four, I don't think. This is just a sampling, but I have every single hose clamp needed. I had a friend of mine towed because he didn't have a clamp with him. Very handy to have. Ignition switch. These go out all the time. Here's a relay. I have no idea what it's for. You need that. And you can put it in your glove box. Fuel rail. Look how brittle that is. I break when I'm putting it on. This is a working fuel injector. I actually had to replace one of these. It was 4th of July, Saturday morning, and I just pulled into a parking spot in Cape May, New Jersey, that, and there was gas squirting out of one of mine all over the place. If I did not have a spare, I would be stuck in Shoretown on a Saturday, 4th of July. That would not have been good. So I replaced that in the parking lot, and I was all set. Another thing you should have is a repair manual. Now, I usually carry the Hanes, I have it in PDF, and my large Hanes manual is missing its cover, so I'm not going to show you a picture of that. This is another smaller Hanes manual that I carry. Um, this is a British one. It's nowhere near as complex as the other one, but it really fits easily in the cabinet. As you can see, my Bentley has seen better days, but I keep a PDF copy on a tablet in the car, so I don't carry this anymore. But you should have one of these manuals. It has lots of troubleshooting stuff in it. Okay, now we're getting to the point of ludicrous, which is fine, but I've seen some people needing these things this summer. 
I will complete to the rear brakes and I carry that only because that's the next thing to get done here. Um, I have an airflow meter box, just the top part. Accelerator cable, that's probably going to go in soon. And if you I will probably have a bay window, definitely carry a clutch cable. Full set of gaskets, front brake pads, clutch save cylinder. Actually, I actually have a brand new fuel injector, which I keep with me. A few other things I carry is a set of two bottle jacks, one small one, one large one. I don't know how rusty your van is, but I live in the Northeast. And that usually that jack that came with the van would just, just tear the bottom of the van off as you crushed it upward as you jacked the car up. You'd actually be just jacking up the side. The van actually wouldn't move. So you need bottle jacks for that. No, I do not live in Frankfurt, Germany. I live in Pennsylvania. We put any tag we want on the front. Because they're too cheap to give us front tags. As you may have seen in my other videos, I'm constantly broke. And I do all my own work. But I'll tell you how I operate a little bit. So, I'm coming back from Assateague last week. And I hear a very loud muffler sound. So I'm driving home. And I'm driving home. And I get home, and I look under the van, and the O2 sensor had blown out of here. And to me, that's all I needed to know. I don't want to know how, why, or how it happened. So I get in line and order a new pipe, as you see here, a new O2 sensor. 125 bucks. I mean, you can take it to your mechanic and spend $200 where you put a helicoil in or something like that, but this pipe is... 12 years old, it's time to go. So I don't think twice about doing things like that because I do my own work. You know, it's the same as when I put in the uh, the stainless steel coolant hoses, well, from the front to back, and the new radiator. I pulled the gas tank out. It was rusty. So they're $100, $125. So I put a new one in. I see people going, well, I got the gas tank out. I think I'll reseal it and spray paint it and blah, blah, blah. You know what? You put all that work into taking the gas tank out. Why are you putting back a rusty gas tank that's 30 years old? Buy a new one. I can highly recommend everybody getting a new radiator if you have an old one. And look at this. This is ready to go anyway. So, I mean, we're going to have to do those other two pipes very shortly, too. One's coming off the engine, which are the worst, but, you know, they're old enough. My wife's very impressed how I save everything. And put it in the yard somewhere. The best was the transmission that sat out here for five years. Women love car parts in the yard. Oh, this is my 2003 Eurovan, by the way. It is a great yard ornament. These are much too expensive to dry, so it sits here and looks really cool. Sometimes we take it out and we put it back here. It gets about two miles per gallon. It's a fortune to fix. Before any trip, I always open up the engine compartment and take a look around. I think someone said it best um, on the Vanagon mailing list. And they said, take a look inside because there's always something going on back there. And it's usually true. So I always go in and check my wires. I check all my vacuum hoses. I'm telling you, vacuum hoses is a big problem with the Vanagons. And this is an 83 and a half, so your engine probably looks different. Check all these. One's coming from the distributor. It's one hidden under the plenum down here. It's even clamped on there now. Check everything in here before I go away. Check your belts. Mine's too loose. Squeals a little bit. Check your fluid. Take a good look around. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. The first thing you do when you buy a Vanagon is you replace all the fuel lines. So, mine are about six years old, so I'm going to do those again next year. Because Vanagons are very capable of catching on fire, especially with this line going through the back here. Let's see, for tools, I carry every tool that I need to work on the van. 
So when I'm working on the van at home, all the tools I use to work on the van are in the van. There's nothing I bring in from the house unless it's like a crowbar or something like that. So maybe I should have a crowbar or something in the van. If you've hung in here this long, um, I guess we could take a look at some of the things I've added to the van over the last 21 years that you might be interested in adding to yours. Now this is an 83.5, uh, but I have a 84 Wolfsburg interior, which I converted about eight years ago. Let's see, what else do I got? Uh, truck fridge, extremely useful. This runs on 12 volts. I run it with my solar panels. I can't live without this. It is twice the space of the old one. It actually keeps food cold. And it has a freezer. So there's ice cream the entire time we're camping. Down below there is a Propex heater. That's the second home it's had. The first home was underneath the seat here. That took up too much space. There is the thermostat for that. And then below that is a cheesy temporary solar controller. My good one broke, so I slapped that one in there. $20 off of eBay. Actually, seems to work pretty well. So I'm going to know what I'm going to do with that. There's a little cabinet over the kitchen. I got that from Canada. I forgot where I got that, but I think it was the last one in can. That is a cup and plate holder. I made that in about 12 minutes out of some wood because I got so tired of grabbing out the plates from down underneath the stairs, which is where we used to keep them. A very cheesy roof rack. And then I have two solar panels. I have a 100 watt. That one tilts. And then I have a 55 watt here. And those two run my batteries. I mean, they charge my batteries which I have for the fridge and for charging all the tablets and phones and everything like that. There are some things I don't carry. I don't carry a gas can. Uh, one of the reasons for that is I travel mostly on the Northeast United States and there's a gas station within walking distance of whatever traffic jam you're sitting in. So you can actually just leave your vehicle there in the traffic jam, go get gas and come back. So that's never a problem. If you're interested in the bike rack, um, that's been on the van since the first owner. It's from a bay window. I've had it ever since. I love it. And I have a Fiamma bike rack, which I like very much. Very sturdy. You can use it as a ladder too. And then a trailer hitch. <laughs> trailer hitch. That's pretty funny. I just think it could pull anything. That's actually for a log splitter. Well, that about wraps it up. Thank you very much.